Hi everybody, this is Rob Swatsky from the York campus of Hack, and in this podcast I'll be focusing on the major functions of the skin. As we've learned in previous podcasts, the integumentary system performs a variety of functions, including thermoregulation, blood storage, protection, cutaneous sensations, excretion and absorption, and vitamin D synthesis. Let's now review and explore these functions a little bit further. The skin plays a major role in thermoregulation, which we know is the regulation of body temperature through homeostasis. The skin regulates temperature by releasing sweat at its surface and controlling the flow of blood in the dermis. When external temperatures increase on a hot summer day, or when the body's internal temperature rises as a result of exercise, more sweat is secreted by the eccrine glands. This sweat evaporates from the skin surface and reduces the body's temperature. Blood vessels in the dermis also dilate or get wider in a process called vasodilation, so more blood moves through the dermis, increasing the amount of heat removed from the body. When external temperatures get colder, eccrine sweat production decreases and heat is conserved. The blood vessels in the dermis constrict or get narrower in a process called vasoconstriction, which reduces blood movement in the skin and slows down heat loss from the body. Contractions of skeletal muscles through shivering also generates heat. We know the dermis contains a rich supply of blood vessels, and this network carries 8 to 10 percent of the total body's blood. Because of this storage function, we can think of the skin as a blood reservoir, able to store or release blood to where it's most needed in the body. The skin has a major protective function for the body, covering very aspects such as physical, chemical, and biological defense. Keratin and the keratinocytes of the epidermis provide defense against physical damage, microbes, chemicals, and heat. Lipids produced by the lamellar granules and sebum from the sebaceous glands waterproof the skin, preventing it from drying out and becoming damaged. Sebum also contains antimicrobial or bactericidal chemicals that destroy certain bacteria. Sweat has an acidic pH, which also helps stop or slow down bacteria. We know that melanin blocks ultraviolet radiation from the sunlight, which helps minimize damage to the DNA. And we also have the immune role provided by the Langerhans cells, also called the intraepidermal macrophages, that let the immune system know when microbes enter the epidermis so other phagocytes can destroy them. Cutaneous sensations originate within the skin and include various tactile or touch sensations such as light or heavy touch, pressure, tickle, and vibration. They also include thermal sensations like hot and cold and warning sensations such as pain. The skin is able to detect so many different stimuli through the range of sensory receptors that it contains such as the corpuscles of touch in the dermis, the hair root plexuses on the hair follicles, and the tactile discs in the epidermis. The skin plays a small role in excretion, which is the elimination of metabolic wastes from the body, and in the absorption of materials from the external environment into the body. About a half liter of water evaporates from the body daily through sweat, which removes water, salts, waste gases like carbon dioxide, and urea and ammonia, two nitrogenous wastes from protein digestion. Some lipid-soluble chemicals can also absorb into the skin, such as the fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K, various drugs and topical steroids, and the respiratory gases oxygen and carbon dioxide. Certain toxic chemicals and heavy metals can also absorb into the skin. 
The skin is also able to synthesize vitamin D through the activation of a precursor molecule by exposure to UV radiation and sunlight. Only 10 to 15 minutes two times a week is needed to synthesize enough vitamin D for the body's needs. People who live in colder, higher latitude countries, or those who spend too much time indoors may have to take vitamin D supplements. Kidney and liver enzymes modify the activated molecule and produce calcitriol, a hormone which is a highly active form of vitamin D that helps in the absorption of calcium from the GI tract into the blood. Vitamin D is thought to help increase the ability of phagocytes to kill bacteria, regulate immunity, and help lower inflammation.